So our idea is that even it's only 215 acres, but we want to get it running well and running sustainably um, with its little inputs and um, and basically taking care of the environment as well. Because we're environmentally, um, we're in a great place up there. Our property is surrounded on two thirds um, by Crediton Creek, um, and the basically the rest of the boundaries is either um, or predominantly Youngler National Park and some of Crediton State Forest. Um, so, you know, we, we're aware of what comes off our property in the term of, you know, runoff of, of whatever chemicals or erosions or, or anything like that, um, pest management tools. Um, we've done a lot of work uh, looking after the riparian zones, so, um, you know, specific fencing and getting cattle out of, out of the dam and onto, you know, off, off um, stream watering points and all that sort of thing. Um, oh, that kind of leads me on to... But um, from there, we originally started um, the cattle that we run, uh, Australian low lines, so they are a compact breed, so their size is a bit smaller. Um, we had low lines, we started at Emu Park on 25 acres with um, four head, and we sort of loved the breed and we went from there, so then we looked around to, to find a, a bigger property with um, more rain fill. But basically, um, so the low lines are, are, are great for us. They were developed in Australia back in the 70s. Um, they were developed to be a smaller frame, um, docile temperament, so easy handling, easy carving. Um, we find they're better on country, especially in high rainfall areas. You don't have the popping that you get um, from bigger cattle. Um, so as a breed, that was great for us. They are a beef cattle breed specifically. They're not milkers. Um, and we had very little cattle um, knowledge when, when we started at Emu Park. So, you know, for, for new, new cattle people, they, they were a great breed as well. Um, all of that combined, we started off selling live animals. So um, we were selling them to, you know, people around the valley and, and a bit further afield um, for small acreage. Um, where they do well, you know, just as, as lawn mowers or what have you. Um, and then we went into the beef trade. So we, we um, developed Youngler Beef about five years ago. We were just selling sides of beef um, direct to people via cuttable abattoir, obviously. Um, and then that morphed into selling beef by the kilo um, at some local markets. The importance there is that, um, and when we're not organic, we were never going to be with, with the number of weeds we have up there, but we wanted to be as close to as possible. And a lot of our market research people we talked to, um, you know, as long as they knew the animals were treated well with as less chemical as possible, um, and you know, low food moles, and and you know where the animals were bred, and all that kind of thing was more important um, to a lot of people. Hence, that led us on the journey of soil improvement, um, which is where we sort of went to next. So uh, that's a bit, so that, that's our animals there, you know, that's what we're, our end product is literally a good rump um, and some good eye fillets and that kind of thing, so that's what, what we're looking at. Um, and, you know, soil, as uh, all the speakers beforehand have mentioned, is, um, you know, so important to us, that's our building block. Um, for us to have a good end product, we need to start with good soil. Um, so healthy soils, then we have our healthy pastures, then we have our healthy cattle, stress-free cattle as well. So from my point of view as a cattle farmer, that's really important. Um, MSA have done a lot of trials to show that um, stress on an animal throughout its life, every stress event lessens the quality of the beef at the end. Um, so for us to have healthy, uh, stress-free animals is very important. Um, one of the ways we do that, you know, we, we don't use dogs to round up, we just whistle them up. Um, but also if you, your cattle are in in good condition, they got in good tucker, then they're not getting stressed from that point of view as well. So that's very important there. Um, yeah, so basically once once we've done all those other things with reef catchments and, and others assistance, um, we did break our paddocks down for rotational grazing as well. Um, and we are still in the process of that. Um, with cow working away, obviously that's difficult. So we've started one half of the property is fairly much done. Um, and the other half is still a work in progress. So, you know, everything, you, you still keep working towards it. Um, 
uh, it was actually Cal's driving um, interest in the agricultural line, and of course he's at work today, so he can't talk to you about it, but if anyone has any specific questions, I'm sure he'd be more than welcome to take phone calls when he's home anyway. Um, but yeah, basically the idea of adding agricultural lime um, uh, to a pasture is in, in the main overall scheme to change the pH. Okay, so there's very acidic soils up at Yungla um, and the lime is going to assist with that. Um, we had a few very degraded pastures, so um, the, the history of the property as a dairy farm, obviously there's been a lot of... Um, super and, and urea and that sort of thing put on and not much else of anything, um, no real real management there. Um, so yeah, our soils were fairly, fairly degraded in some of our paddocks. Um, so yeah, I think the next one is, that, that's an example, that photo of what um, some of the, the degraded pastures looked like. And you know, what you're looking at there is um, weeds, even the weeds are stunted. Um, you can see quite a lot of soil um, through through the pasture there, um, and obviously no grass, tiny little bit of stunted clover. Um, so we, we need to, yeah, we need to change that. We need to cover the pasture, we need to cover the paddock, um, and we need to grow some, some better grasses. Um, so the grass, the predominantly the grass up there is Kaikuya, so we have a lot of Kaikuya, which is a cool, temperate um, grass, and also clover, so clover is very important as the legume um, for the nitrogen fixation. Um, so to the idea of ag lime is A to, as I said, to neutralise the acidity, um, freeing up trapped nutrients, so all those great nutrients that are already remaining in the soil but the pastures aren't utilising, the lime will unlock that. Um, getting rid of aluminium toxicity that you may have in the soil, um, and which we did, and thereby improving the establishment and the yield and the persistence of the, the pasture as well, so the actual um, resilience and how well your pasture does in, in the good times and also in the bad times as well and how quickly it springs back. Um, and yeah, so, you know, legumes prefer um, the, the more neutral pHs and we want to get that legume in there as we've talked about. Um, biodiversity, so you know we need our grasses, but we must also have those legumes as well, um, and it's got to be the right sort of balance there. Um, the other upshot of, of course, improved pastures, um, and another idea of this trial is improved carrying capacity. So that's one of the goals we aim towards. As being a small farm, uh, again, only 215 acres, we want to maximise how many cattle we can run on that farm. Um, and as I said, low lines um, are a bit smaller, so you can naturally run a few more of them. They are really good food converters, so they're ideal for smaller properties. Um, and we just wanted to, um, our goal was actually to have about 70 breeders on the property, which we're fairly close to getting at the moment. So um, we're fairly happy with that. Our carrying capacity on the good pastures is probably about one, um, one beast per acre. So that, that's fairly good. Um, now, of course, the, so yeah, so once you improve um, through the lime application, hopefully we're going to get a higher protein content, um, protein and nutrient content in the pastures. So the actual grass that the cattle are eating are going to be much more nutritious for them, so therefore that will flow on to, um, again, your healthier cattle and, and better beef output at the end. Um, and the gr increased ground cover will um, lessen erosion as well, so, you know, um, again, up there with our high rainfall, and that can happen very quickly. We can have a lot of rain in a small amount of time, um, and that can create a lot of erosion problems. Um, so if you've got a good ground cover, um, then you're not going to have those erosions. And it's not only the visible ground cover, um, but it's your, your root contents as well. So your healthier roots are going down further, um, and they're binding the soil better. Um, and again, with having different, um, uh, different, uh, you know, legumes and grasses, they have different root systems as well. Um, so that all helps aim towards that. So the trial site. So that is our property there um, up at Crediton. So the blue line is our boundary. 
the green is sort of, you can see the houses and the sheds and the dam. We've got a spring-fed dam there. Um, a lot of this over here is actually lantana and tobacco bush. Um, so a lot of that has since been cleared since that photo. Um, the red line here, so this is the trial site that we actually used for um, putting the ag lime out. Now, a little bit hard to see in perspective there, but that trial site, um, <coughs> half of it in that corner there is all creek flat. So this boundary along here, the wiggly one, that's all Crediton Creek. Um, so you've got the creek going along. This is all creek flats. And then this is all hilly country and gullies up towards there. So it was a really good mix of, you know, hill and flats and what have you um, to do the trial on. That area is about 35 acres um, and it is the southeast corner of Cloudbreak there. Um, as I said, yeah, bounded by Crediton Creek. Um, and the rear we've covered. The way we actually undertook, undertook the trial, and I should um, just mention that we started the trial in June of last year, so we're coming up on sort of 18 months of the trial. Um, the research we did and sort of getting soil tests done, I should mention we had soil tests done before, during, and we're still continuing to have the soil tests done. Um, uh, agronomists recommended that we apply two tonne per acre of agricultural line, so that worked out around 70 tonnes um, because the lime comes in 33 tonne lots um, with the truck and dog. We got a tr um, couple of, or however many truckloads it, it took to get the 66 um, tonne of lime on there. Our choice of ag lime, so there is, um, there is a local lime uh, producer here which we have used before. Um, but this time we went into a bit more analysis of the lime um, and we found that um, there was a supplier in far north Queensland up near Townsville um, that supplied a lime um, that was, it, it was a better product for what we were looking at doing. Um, it was actually a crushed limestone rather than being the locally available dolomite like product. Um, so the crushed limestone was better. It had a higher calcium content, so we needed less, you know, to, to get more, more bang for your buck, I guess. Um, and it also had a higher reactivity, so a, a better ability to physically change that pH. So for that reason, we chose to go um, with the, the Townsville um, mob and get the lime from there. Um, that, in turn, of course, had problems because the lime had to call, come all the way from Townsville. The first trip we had, um, we had a few issues because the lime had actually settled in the truck and dock. So when we tried to get it out, it was a real problem. Um, of course, our slopey paddocks is also a real problem. So we could only deliver this to our top gate paddock. Obviously, there was no way we were going to get it down to the gallows paddock where we are doing the trial. Um, and even, you know, the, the, the couple of gates the fellow had to go through the first time, he wasn't quite ready for the slope, um, even though it was dry, so he couldn't get up the slope. So we had to dump um, some of the lime in a gateway and then sort of go and dump the rest of it. So it was all a learning experience for us and, and the delivery people and everything as well. Um, but yeah, that's physically how it arrived at our place. And that's the amount that was dumped um, in the gateway there. And in moving it, um, of course, nothing's easy. We had a bobcat, um, which we were then filling a spreader onto a tractor. So um, the bobcat had fill, the tractor had trundle off, it would spread the load um, and come back again. So it, um, yeah, it was time, time consuming, but um, we're happy with it. And that's just a photo of the tractor actually spreading it on some of the hills. So um, we have, luckily we have, um, oh, my, my hubby's fairly good with it and we also have a local guy that um, is used to operating on hills as well so um, he, he did a lot of the spreading for us there and that's the, the lime actually spread on, on one of the paddocks. <coughs> now soil tests are very interesting because um, the two we've had done so that shows June and November there's no change in the pH. Um, we were expecting that because we had been told that it was a very long-term thing. I'm not sure of the science behind why. 
Um, so we won't overly surprise when, when there was no change there. Um, we will continue to keep doing soil tests and um, you know, hopefully in the years to come there, there will be a, a change on paper there. Having said that, um, there is a huge visible change. So um, in those paddocks, um, in the seven years that we've been there, there's never been a good cover. There's certainly never been a good crop of kaikuya or clover. Um, we've never been able to run many cattle on it. It, it hasn't fattened cattle, all those sorts of things. Um, fairly quickly after we added the lime, um, we began to see changes. So we see, saw that pasture coming back, we saw the kaikuya coming back, um, and we've never seen so much clover in there um, as what we had after the trial. Um, and I do want to mention the pasture, uh, pasture resilience as well. So um, we firmly believe that the lime and, and all you know, the, the process that it has had on the soil and, and making better pasture has also made the pasture more resilient. Um, and that's, uh, we've had a couple of good examples since last June, of course. We had Cyclone Debbie in March, um, which knocked us about, you know, fairly well as it did everyone. Those creek flats there um, had a metre of water over them, so we had water and debris across all the fences, which is how we know how, how high it got. Um, before that, we would have been worried that we would have lost fences and pasture and everything um, because, you know, we didn't have the pasture cover there. But because we had a better, stronger pasture cover, we actually kept the pastures and they bounced back really quickly. So even after having all that water and, and silt over them, they came back really quickly. We didn't have the weeds and everything that we would normally have seen from flood water. Um, so, you know, we got the, the grass and the clover sprung back a lot quicker than we even thought that they would during that flood. Similarly, um, a few months later, we have frost. So down on the creek flats there, um, the flats get down to about minus seven. Um, so, it, you know, the kaikuya is frost tolerant. That, that's why we're very lucky in having the kaikuya. Um, but of course, it, it does get knocked around. Um, but this winter, we definitely didn't see as much damage as we have before. So. Um, you know, those, the kaikuya and the clover and, and the paspail, and to an extent, it, it gets knocked around a bit more. But they've most definitely um, uh, come through it better and then taken off again a lot quicker than usual. And that's pretty much how the paddock's looking at the moment. So, um, yeah, it has been a, a total turnaround. Um, as you, you know, obviously, there has been rain then as well, and everyone needs rain. Um, but yeah, we're, we're firm believers, believers that that, that ag lime, um, being a simple natural product, um, you know, you're not not having to add all those chemical inputs, um, and it is working, literally working from the ground up to improve that pasture and carrying capacity and nutrition and all that sort of thing. Um, that was also visually shown by the health of our cattle. So we've had cattle in that trial plot during that time. Um, the cattle have just put on weight incredibly. Um, and not only that, they are in good condition. So they're, you know, they're, their coats are very shiny. They're not getting as many tick and that kind of thing. They're, um, you know, they're, they're <coughs> finishing beautifully for our meat trade. Um, and so you can clearly see the value in that. Um, uh, white clover is a great protein, so that's very valuable, you know, for cattle fodder straight up. Um, but yeah, certainly adding the lime has enhanced all of those nutrients and proteins within the grass, um, and the cattle are just going ahead in, in leaps and bounds. Um, we used to have one good uh, paddock up near the house where we used to finish our cattle on before they went. Um, down to cuttable. We can now do that in this pasture as well. Um, the cattle aren't keeping up with the pasture. The pasture is sort of growing ahead of the cattle, um, which, you know, for any cattle person is an awesome thing to have happening. So that's, that's a win-win situation. So yeah, that's basically a summary of what we've been doing. Um, and yeah, thank you all for your attention. And if anyone has any questions, I'm more than welcome. I'm happy to um, answer them.